Uh, everybody, it's your powerful Rudy 4 here, and the day we are participating in the round two of season one for the FIA Nations Cup Championship in Gran Turismo Sport for the PlayStation 4. Uh, so what we'll have here is the uh, the selection of cars. Now, I did actually do all right in practice in terms of times, but we qualified and I didn't do great. And I had a couple of bumps with people. So I was actually getting like 135s, 136s in practice, so I was doing kind of well. And you can see where that would have put me in the uh, in the pecking order, like. But uh, unfortunately, I didn't uh, didn't do great in the actual qualifying when it mattered. When uh, when it came to the crunch, um, I actually pulled quite low, unfortunately. So you can see there's a fair few cars there. Um, lucky player flaws. Someone we're going to be coming at. Talk about it extensively later on in the game, and there's me. We're all ready for. I'm driving the Jaguar F-Type. Um, now it's not the fastest car in the world, um, but it does have a lot of hold of the road. So I've noticed recently that um, the thing that lets us down the most isn't the fact that I can't get a good lap time in because I can. I'm capable of getting good lap times just as much as the next guy. Um, I've noticed it's consistency, which is my problem. So it's all well and good getting in one fantastic lap time and then find that the next lap you've spun out or something. And I tended to find that uh, the Jaguar F-Type suited me a little bit more in terms of helping me get consistency. Prior to that I was very much a, a Porsche guy. The trouble was because it was an MR, um, the Porsches always tended to spin out, especially if you took the TCS down a little bit, or off entirely. They would just spin out. So uh, I thought, you know what it is, this season I'm going to go for something a little bit different. I'm going to try the Manufacturer's Cup, which I'll be making a little video, video on for round two as well, as a as a Jag. And I thought, while well, I'm getting used to the to the car, I'll use it as well in the Nations Cup. So we're off here. I've uh, started off not in the best position, but you know, it's the start of a race, I'm right again. And up ahead of me, position 9, P9, is Lucky Player 004. Um, we're going to have a lot of conversations about him later on, but for the time being, let's see how we do it. So we've went wide there, um, nice and tidy, it's following the line straight away. Now ordinarily, um, I wouldn't be playing with the uh, driving assist line on, but it's just because it's the, it's the big race and I'm not used to it, uh, this type of car at this point, so I've left the, uh, the driving line on. But as it happens, I know this course quite well, I, don't, I didn't need to it down at all. Uh, it was just because it was the big one that I've been waiting for for ages. Um, so I'm following the line around perfectly fine, you know, I'm moving up places there um, nice and steadily. A little bit of grass there, breaking, 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 and that's hit that's really nice. I've come through, I don't go into the GTR, the GTR ghosts, that wasn't through me, it, the ghosts itself. Um, and I come through fine, so I'm looking for the GTR slipstream, I come past fine, and uh, breaking, breaking, breaking for this hairpin here. Take it nice and steady all the way around. Looking for the wide exit. Not quite the wide exit I was wanting, but that's because I was wanting to get around the GTR. I've managed to get around the GTR. Um, I'll drop a, a lift into the next, next place again. Come around that bend there, and I'm uh, I'm flying. I'm, I'm looking, looking quite well. As you can see, all of the cars have, have fallen left, right, and centre. I'm making good progress. Now, I bounce off that car there, and he even feels as a flash, but that wasn't very fair because, to be fair, there was nothing I could do about that. He was ghosting, he was in my line of sight, and what happens? I flip and spin out because of the sword. Really wasn't happy about that at all. Um, and it knocks us back a significant amount of places there, but I'm back on the road and I'm progressing forward. And the advantage of this straight here is that you do kind of have a chance of catching a bit of a slip, slipstream, so I'm catching a bit of a slipstream there, and I know the, the track quite well, and like I say, I was doing really good times in the practices, so I still thought at this point, you know, it's still early doors, it's only the start of lap two, I could still get up to maybe even P, P8, P, P7 even potentially, you know, provided I didn't have another spin off and no one else gives any bother, because you can see I'm driving through perfectly fine, you know, the cars are flying left, right and centre there. I'm getting through perfectly fine, my SR is going up, uh, I'm breaking just a tap, just a tap to get around this corner, because I wanted to stay um, with my foot on the accelerator, progressing around, uh, and I come out with that exit absolutely lovely there. Speaking of my accelerator, I'm using the uh, G29 steering wheel, fantastic piece of kit like, and uh, it makes the experience so much more better. Uh, back through that chicane there, and I'm up and I'm following around. So, um, if you'll notice that my uh, accelerator is almost always, most of the time, full throttle. Um, 
and I think I've got this cross down to Canterbury good T. I want to go to the GTR again, flying across the road. And you can see I'm making up that pace. So although I spun out at the end of lap one, I'm, I'm very quickly getting back to where I was before. And I'm making, I'm making fantastic progress, really. Um, it just goes to show that um, I really should have done better in the qualifying. I should have been further up in the grid. I'm not saying I would have gotten pole or anything, but I should have really been further up in the grid, potentially top four. Um, a little bit of a bump there. Catch the uh, catch the slipstream of P10. It's got a penalty as well. I've got a penalty, but uh, I've noticed, especially in the uh, lower levels, not many people tend to burn off the, uh, the penalties. I don't really know why. You should really. Yeah, I'm coming around there, take another bit of a contact, a little bit of exit, perfectly fine, and I'm sitting there in 13th. And we S was down, but that's because it, they tapped me, not me tapping them, which is really annoying. But it's just one of those things, I suppose. Go through that there, perfectly fine. Now, it wasn't as straight as it could have been. I tend to take that a little bit more straight. But I had to do a bit of bending there, but catching that person slipstream there, cutting past, a little tap on the brake, and then getting onto my line so I can do a full acceleration around this bend here. Um, P9. The Frenchman takes us there, but he's also got a penalty as well, so I'm still playing it cool at this point. There's plenty of time to go, there's a long way to go in this race. Now we fuel, I'm going full throttle here in terms of my fuel. I'm on, uh, I haven't mixed it at all, it's not at all lean, it's full on on one. And uh, my strategy for this, if I'm honest, um, was to get to the first few, lap, first few laps and get into a relatively good position. Now obviously that crash knocked that to hell. Because um, what I was really hoping was to maybe get a slipstream, maybe it's lap 3, lap 4, lap 5. And bump that, maybe the fuel consumption down to maybe 2 or a 3 to save a bit for the for the pits, because you definitely will 100% have to pit in this. Um, the wheels were starting to go a little bit as well, but nothing too bad, because thankfully, like I say, because I know the track very well, I'm sticking to the track. So I'm coming around the, uh, the final bend here for, uh, for, for, for lap 3. And I'm getting the slipstream for P8, and I'm in a good position there. All right, I've got a penalty, but I'm, I've, I've made that time back that I lost from the, the crash at the end of uh, lap one. So I'm doing, I'm doing a good drive. You know, I'm very happy with my performance so far. Just a, a tap on the brake there, and coming around full throttle to get around. Not always, just a, just a gentle top. If I think I'm going to come off the line, but I exit that perfectly fine. Coming through the, uh, the, the chicane here. Now again, I would have liked that to be a bit straighter. I'm heading towards the wall here and I'm off. If I was a bit straighter there, I would have been getting through there. I think that's because maybe I'll be going a little bit, a little bit too fast through that chicane there. But I've, I've managed to come through. Unfortunately, the other cars sped off ahead of me. The Frenchman sped off ahead of me. Taking this bend here, um, lovely bend, uh, nice and steady, full acceleration all around, exit perfectly. Coming down, getting ready for the hard break. Now I'm watching for this one, the 150. Uh, meter box, that's when I do the brake there. Slam on the brake and I go through the, sh the chicane there, absolutely spot on, no problem at all. Maybe it was a little bit faster, I could have done maybe it was a little bit faster, a couple more miles per hour, but I did all right there. Uh, coming around this bend here, and I'm starting, the, the track's starting to open out now, so we've reached a sort of like lap four and the track's starting to open out. The, there's been a few spin offs by people and stuff and that, you know, and the, the tracks are starting to open up, so you're not getting as much benefit from slipstream. This is when, um, you know, the likes are like, the, uh, the fuel consumption would really matter because this is when you would really want to sort of push, you've got the space to do it. Early on, you know, if you want your, your fuel consumption of a two, your consumption of a three, ideally, but I wanted a good start. If it wasn't, wasn't for that crash on um, lap one, I probably would have been going from two, two or three up to two or one at this point, probably one. Um, so I'm coming down the street here. I'm making good time, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm progressing really well, I'm happy with my performance. Uh, SR goes up, tap on the brake, get round the first bend, follow the line nicely, and I'll exit that perfectly there. Not quite touching the apex, but I'm quite happy because it keeps us straight on for this chicane here. Now, this is a bit better, so I'm, I'm a bit straight on the chicane there, so I'm nowhere near the wall. The grass is time, tap the apex there, lovely as you want to do. Coming over the bridge, I'm still nowhere near the uh, the, the, four, the, the player in front of me. Now this is lucky player 004 and the battle is about to begin with this guy. So he goes wide there so I catch up with him a little bit, he's on the grass and I've made up some space. So now we're in a fight and this fight is going to last for some time. So I go for it, won't take, can't do it, break, coming back behind him, play it nice and patient game. I'm, you know, like I say, I was talking about consistency before being a weakness. This is where I'm starting to improve. 
Now, the, the madman in me, maybe a, a couple of weeks ago, might have uh, just followed through on that and tried to take me on the inside. No, I did the right thing there. I backed out of that and let him let him proceed first, and you know that I'd catch him later on. Now, I do that, that, that turn there perfectly, and lucky player, what, four by now, must know that I'm on his tail, and he must know I'm, I'm gaining on him. I'm ever so slightly making progress over and over again. You can see he's the wrong line there. It's hitting the grass there. I am all over this kid. I'm taking him past here. So I'm flying past him. Now he knows there. He must know at this point that I'm a better driver than him. So what you do, he bumps us there. The sun bumps us there. Spins us off my lane. I go flying past him there. And I end up on that side by side here. Now I'm, I'm trying to drive. And what do you do? Bang! He pushes us into the pits. Deliberately pushes me into the pits here. Not happy at all. What do you do? He spoils his own race as well by spinning out. I am stotting at this point. I'm absolutely raging. Full of hell, swearing me head off as I can imagine. He deliberately, deliberately pushed me. First of all, going into the last bend, bumped me deliberately into the last bend and knocked me off the lane. Um, because you could see I was a better driver than him. I was, I was by far going to overtake him by a long shot. Bumped me in the last, uh, the, la the last corner. Come to the straight. Um, he comes from left to right, from coming off the track onto the track. And as soon as he develops into a solid form, what to do? He side smashes me and tries to force me into the pits. Now I'm not wanting to go into the pits yet, I'm not even close to wanting to go into the pits yet. And what's he do? He smashes me into the pits, spins me the wrong way, the car goes, resets on the on the main straight, he goes flying, does a couple of uh, 360s, and maybe he's two, he goes spinning off, smashes into a wall, and it's all his fault. I am full of hell. So although I've got all this track to myself, I can't lie, at this point, all I'm thinking is lucky player one, you arsehole. The, the match is on, I've got to beat this clear like it's, I'm full of hell. For me now, this is a bit of a grudge match, I've got to beat him out of, out of, out of pride now. Just so I can message him at the end of the, uh, the race. So he's, he's P13, um, I'm, I'm happily sitting there in P8, and I've got, a, I've got a different target now. I'm starting to maybe, my blood's up a little bit. And maybe I should calm down a little bit more, but my blood's up a little bit. And now my objective is not to finish as high as possible or to get as many points or anything like that. It's to beat Lucky Player 1. Get uh, Lucky Player 4. So, um, let me know what you think there. Did, did, unless I've interpreted that completely wrong, and I'd like to say I, I, I had discussions with them um, at the end of the match, where I full-on raged with them. What could I have done differently there that wouldn't have caused that crash to happen? I genuinely don't think I could have done anything there. Um, I think it was entirely his malicious fault. So I did message him at the end of the race and I sort of said, what the hell are you doing there? You're deliberately trying to smash me off the road. Now his claim is that he was trying to go into the pits. He was not quite trying to go into the pits at all. Two reasons. He knew exactly where I was. He knew exactly where I was because he went from behind us to in front of us to go standing alongside me. So he knew exactly where I was. Like There was no doubt. Secondly, his, his turn to go into the pits was far, far too erratic if you meant to do that intentionally. You wouldn't go left to right to left to enter the pits, you'd stay left and just go straight on through the pits and slow down just generally, gradually and slowly. No, he deliberately tried to smash me into the pits, fishtailed me and made me do a 90 degree turn into the wall. Um, yeah, didn't, I didn't accept that explanation at all. And what was worse is, the uh, Manufacturer Cup, which happens next, as you can see, I'm not concentrating so I can think, well, it's lucky player four here, I'm coming off the road. The Manufacturer Cup next, I meet the player again, and oh, he's the only other F type Jag um, in that race. So I'll probably make another video about that and our, um, <laughs> our experiences together with lucky player 004 um, in the next video, probably. But back to this one. So we're back on the final straight of lap 7, halfway through the race. Now, at this point, you know, I am starting to look at my fuel. So my fuel is alright, I've, I've worked it out pretty well actually. So it means that I'm going to get another lap in, with just, just enough uh, you know, fumes left in the tank to make sure I definitely get to the line uh, and get through the pits. Tyres are starting to take a bit of a hammer now, especially front, front right. Uh, driver right side's taking a bit of a hammer in now. It's because of all the apex that I'm hitting and stuff and that. You know, I mean, because this is FIA Championship and um, obviously it's not in real time, I think it's like times six fuel, times seven damage, I think it is, tire wear, I think. Um, so yeah, I, I've, I've 
got my pit strategy worked out pretty damn well, if I'm honest. It's going gonna, it's gonna to land nicely. Um, and I, and I'm, it, if, 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 with the exception of the two bumps, the crash at the very start of lap one, and that disaster with Play 4, I think I've drawn a very good race, if I'm honest. I'm very happy with my performance. It's just that, you know, I keep getting distracted by this point by the, the sheer cheek of, of Lucky Play 004, and it's just it's affecting me driving a little bit. I'm pushing here for, for P6, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in P7, I'm comfortable, but I'm going wide, I'm making silly mistakes like that because I'm just full of rage. I completely spin out, smash the wall, stop, put in reverse, get back on track, and lose the position there. I'm nowhere near P6. I've lost, uh, I've lost P7, I'm in P8, and all oh, right, you know, I've, I've got no one behind us, I've got loads and loads of space behind us, but really, I should have been a lot higher up the road, um, and a lot higher on the, on, the, on the grid. It's just, you know, when you have an experience like that, when you've got such a, such a bad experience like that, and you're full of rage, and you, you know, you're full of hell, it, it does it does follow you for, for a couple of laps afterwards like you know you can't wait to speak to the guy I come into the pits here and the strategy is to definitely definitely change my tyres because they're starting to get goosed tyres go up get changed now there is six laps left so I want to fill this tank up to the maximum and uh, go all the way up to six click exactly on six click um, and I'm off. That way I can do full uh, fuel mixture of one all the way around and that's my fuel strategy gone now. I don't have to worry about messing around with the fuel strategy at all. I can get on the entire lap and run fine well. So that was a fairly good pit stop and the strategy worked out quite well. Brand new tyres with uh, just over half the um, half the race left to, left to go. My drive's doing quite well and now, now I can start to make a bit of pace because the, the, the field's opened up nicely. I've got no one in front of us, I've just got to get myself around the track now. So I'm starting to jump a little bit in the uh, the recordings just to try and progress the uh, the, the race along because the, the, there's not much happening in this, in, this, uh, in terms of other players. Uh, just just giving you a good example of how uh, my driving was sort of performing over the uh, over the full race. Now I wasn't feeling any sort of um, level of um, tiredness or fatigue or anything like that. I felt very fresh in myself, just 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 annoyed with uh, <laughs> with the, with the performance of some of the other drivers, especially in an FIA you know championship race. Something that you know you wait on for like you know a week, two weeks. You know you, you look forward to the race, you kind of wait for it to happen. It's in your calendar, it's in your head. You think about it when you're at work. So when it finally happens, you're out of the moon, and then for that to happen, it sort of does annoy you. And it, it, it's affecting me race, it's affecting me driving. Like I say, I was doing, I was doing like two, one three fives, one three sixes during my practice. Um, just had a bit of bad luck during the qualifying. Don't know what he's flashing at here for. He's, uh, you know, uh, perfectly within my rights to be there. It wasn't my fault that he, was, that he took that too fast and had to spit off. Um, go on there, moves a little bit wide, didn't touch the apex, but at least I'm flush for a nice straight drive all the way down here. Um, so we are about to join lap 10, so it's not far to go now, and the grid's very much sort of uh, wide enough, so that the only thing that's going to affect um, positioning now is going to be mistakes. There's not going to be many opportunities to challenge, I think the, the, yeah, the P12 is too far ahead, but again, I, I, I know that I'm a good driver on, on this particular course, and on that day I was doing quite well, so I wanted to push I thought to myself, you know what it is, I just play my own game, I've got an opportunity to play my own race, I might be able to make a bit of ground. So I do, I follow me, I follow me plan, I tap the brakes as I'm running around that corner at the entrance to go full throttle all the way around, and I'm slowly catching up on P9. You know, I'm doing well, I'm doing well, I've got no, I've got no pens, and the SR's going back up, I'm braking at just the right point, 180 metres out, going through the chicken's perfectly fine, and I'm slowly, slowly getting back into uh, a, a good position. Now keeping in mind where I started, I'm already ahead of where I started. Now if you all if you start in one position and you finish higher up the table, you've done well. Wh wh whoever you are, whatever your race is, if you finish higher than where you start, you've, you've had a good race. I think I could have finished higher than where I eventually do, had not have been for the insolences. But I still feel that this race overall has been very good. And I'm growing in confidence, you can see I'm starting to push more and more and because I've got the space to do it, there's more no around us, I'm slowly creeping up on P9, taking that corner lovely, break just at the right time to get around there full throttle. I'm still not quite close enough to get to get the uh, this guy's um, slipstream, but I'm not far off. I'm thinking to myself I might be able to get it in turn one or turn two. So SR goes up, 
tap the brake to get into the right angle and then full throttle all the way around pump on that throttle all the way around full throttle looking for the apex to come out and again I've made ground on him it's slowly it's surely but it is gaining ground I am I am coming close to him now he took that far too wide there and he's now went far too wide right which means I'm right up on him he made a mistake there and I've capitalised it use the slipstream and I'm going for the own take come on push over come on push tap the brake there he's playing to me one race still don't get into too uh, too too blood blood crazy we're flying past uh, P8 there who loves going flying off the track there and I'm up to P9 and I'm chasing P8 now now I did come off the track there so I've got, I've got a nasty uh, pen there which I think was a bit cruel if I'm honest um, just for coming off the track a little bit seemed a bit unfair but I'm looking at P8 now and I'm thinking that's my position lap. I can definitely take that. I've got three laps, three and a half laps pretty much still to go. This driver's obviously is making a bit of mistakes. If, if I can keep my own track, I'm going to do it. So I spin around there, he goes flying, and I'm in P8. Excellent. Um, now I'm not going to catch P7 unless he has a major, major problem. He's just too far ahead. But all I've got to do is steer the course and I'll, and I'll finish P8. Keep in mind, I've got a, I've got a pen. I might even have, to have an opportunity to get rid of it. Um, I don't like taking penalties on nice straights like what this one is here because, you know, you're, you're losing so much forward momentum. The best time to take a, a penalty on, on this sort of track is just before a, a, a corner or just, just after a corner when you exit, but certainly not on a long, long straight like this. That would just be madness. Two laps left to go tap the brake so I can get the right angle, full throttle all the way around, I'm looking for the apex, there's the cone, the apex, taps it, perfect, entry and exit that, I'm looking for a nice straight drive through the chicane here, yep, looking good, no way near the wall, touches the apex on the right hand side, perfect, I am doing a fantastic drive here, I've pulled away from the drivers behind us, it looks like I've got this position all wrapped up, the penalty is a bit of a concern, because I noticed the drivers that I did overtake didn't have a lot of penalties on them. Um, but, like I see, I might have an opportunity to get rid of it, and I'm, and I'm trying to push. Uh, I'm still at this point thinking I'm not going to get anywhere near P7. And then this happens. I break, get, go through there perfectly fine, go through there perfectly fine. Um, and I'm starting to see that he's getting a bit closer. Now, I don't know if that's because I'm driving faster than he is, or if he's uh, slowing down because of potentially like a fuel problem or something. Maybe he's a bit close to his fuel, maybe his, his strategy hasn't worked out properly. And I go a bit wide there, and then I've, I've blown it a little bit. You know, I, I, the opportunity to try and catch P7's gone, I think. Uh, unless his fuel strategy has gone to cock. Um, you know, there's not much chance of it, but again, I find myself coming people a little bit closer. Now, I'm getting a blue flag wave here. I don't know why. You know, the, the P1 is nowhere near behind me. He's the other side of that bend there, for example. You know, I, 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 I do follow, you know, racing etiquette, and if he was nearby, I definitely would, I would get out of his way. But I think the blue flag was just a little bit premature there, like he's not near me. Tap the brake, go around, get the, get the angle bit wide, bit wide, bit wide, that's why I'm pumping that accelerator, pumping it, not full on throttling it down this time, and he pulls away a little bit of pace on it. but you know what, it's lap 13, the blue, blue flag keeps getting waved, so I'm constantly looking in the rear view mirror, waiting for the uh, P1 to come up behind us so I can let him pass, and he's not there, he's just not there, there's far, it was far too much notice, now, I know it's important to be aware of what's going on with your surroundings and stuff like that, and I know that you should you should need a bit of notice before you know you're, you're about to be overtook by a, 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 a faster driver or a driver further up the grid. I, I get that and stuff, and you need a bit of time to do your decision, but that was a bit too not too far forward. I keep having to look in the rear view mirror to see where he is. I'm not really concentrating, going through the chicane here, and uh, the, the blue flag's just flashing away, just flashing away. I'm like, there's no way near us. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, he's nowhere near us. The, the positions are pretty much settled. I'm not going to catch P7. Uh, P1's nowhere near us. The flag is going to disappear unless he's got some sort of super fast car. Um, he's, he's not going to get me before the end of this, this race. So I'm not slowing down. I am not pulling to one side to let him pass because he's nowhere freaking near. He needs to be a lot closer than that for me to consider pulling to one side and getting off my line. Um, coming through with the... Uh, the, the final bend here, tap the brake, go around, and I'm so, all of a sudden I'm on top of P7 again. And again, I think this guy, this, this Nissan GTR, must have some sort of fuel management issue. I don't think he is he is full on, full, you know, level one mixture. 
because he just he, he seems to have moments where he, he pulls away and then and then all of a sudden he's just slow right down. I don't think it's because he's breaking. I mean, I even go to the tap on there. Uh, and now I'm in his slipstream, so I've, I, I'm in two minds at this point. I'm like, do I, do I push? Do I push? And the simple fact of the matter is, I get a little bit greedy. I think to myself, you know what it is? It's there. Just just go for it. If you overtake him, then you find that he takes you again when it comes to the penalty take because he hasn't got one. Fine. So push. So I tap the brake, go for the, for the overtake, manage to get alongside him, but I can't quite overtake him here. Go for the exit, tap the apex, and bang! I'm in front of him. Champion. And then disaster happens. Um, I'm looking for where he is, he's, he's far too far on the inside, I'm not concentrating and I go far too far off, completely spin off at, a sh at the, the chicane there that I've done F fine for for the last 13 laps, so I'm absolutely raging. Games have uh, been finished, I'm spinning out like hell because I'm not I'm not taking my time. I'm waiting for the counter to tick down 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, lap over and I see where I finish. Now I think I did a pretty good race there, finishing 8th, going up 2 places, I had 2 major incidences, especially the second one which is nothing short of criminal. I think I did alright, can you let me know what you think of me driving? Thanks very much for watching, all the best, ta da!